Our principal area of research is repairing human body parts, either using synthetic materials or, as people are very aware, using living cells to engineer functional tissues to repair the body. So this is our tissue engineering and tissue culture laboratory. Tissue culture, the growing of living cells inside these incubators, is a really fundamental technique and technology for many areas of science. There are two really good reasons why we wish to culture cells in a lab like this. Firstly, uh, we want to culture cells on materials to predict how the living body would, would respond to that material. This often cuts out the use of animals in research and if we're using human cells, there's a much clearer idea about how the body is going to respond to a new material. Secondly, of course, I mentioned earlier, there's this fantastic new field of cell therapy and tissue engineering, actually using these cells as living factories to repair and regenerate tissues in the body. This is the future for medicine. It combines elements of classical engineering and making medical devices, together with aspects of stem cell science, and putting the two together to actually have a form of therapy that can be used to address when the body goes wrong. We do work with industries as well, and so a good example is in our own research for nerve guides to repair nerve injury. And so we have commercial partners who manufacture medical devices, and they are very interested because effectively they can see a product being made. The key challenges in tissue engineering of skin are actually very interesting. People have been culturing skin cells since the early 80s. So the question isn't, can you do it and will they work? But how can you make it convenient for patients, convenient for surgeons and affordable? And that's actually the biggest challenge, as you might imagine. We've been working with the burn surgeons in Sheffield since 92. We've been looking at developing cell carriers to improve the quality of cells that leave the lab and get onto the patient and also to try and make some aspects of this commercially viable as well. One of the particular partners that we've been working with recently through the Regenerate Group is Kairos. And Kairos are based in Leeds and what they've done traditionally is make synthetic ligaments and they've been very, very successful in this for well over 15 years. And so they've become interested and they've, they've come on board with us to use their processing technologies with polymers to actually make nerve guides, a completely different area for them, but something with which we've got a multitude of expertise in. Our group has a long experience of working with industry. This is still very much the cutting edge where industry is engaged, because it's this device industry that's involved in treating millions of patients worldwide. And often working with small companies, this is a really good example of how the university can offer tremendous benefit, because small companies don't necessarily have large facilities on their back doorstep where Sheffield University has every kind of research laboratory you could possibly want. So here we have cell culture for the evaluation of biocompatibility, but we have laboratories for material science, materials development and characterisation, and ultimately we can even go through to clinical evaluation in the hospital, which is at the back of this building. It's a fantastic opportunity to really take products through from concept to market. This is actually quite a large laboratory in terms of its, of its surface area. We've got a multitude of different pieces of equipment and we've actually got PhD students and postdocs and technicians who spend many hours in here per day working on a multitude of different projects. We have five principal investigators of which I am one. I have my own research group which is about 15 people. And so effectively the way in which the laboratory is organised is according to the techniques that people need to do. What you see behind you is a suite of clean rooms. Now these, as the dials imply, have got complex airflows and they're designed so that you can culture patient skin cells under very, very clean conditions that would allow you to get accreditation by the Department of Health so that the cells are fit for use on patients. But I think the key strengths of our research group are that we are interdisciplinary. So at one end we start off with working with clinicians to define what the problem is and actually this is the hardest bit. The thing that you think is the problem is not often the problem. And then we have cell biologists, tissue engineers, material scientists, polymer chemists, um, right through to getting cells back to the patient, which sometimes we've done that on a commercial basis. Multidisciplinary work in Sheffield is the right place to be, uh, particularly in what I do, because I work a lot with uh, polymeric materials and polymeric nanotechnology, and we definitely are one of the strongest, if it's not the strongest in the country, polymer nanotechnology groups here. In the last 10 years or so, there has been a great 
reduction in the amount of new therapies that we can bring into the clinics. And there are many problems associated with this uh, reduction, mostly to do, of course, with the discovery of new therapies and the understanding of biology and medicine, but also a problem in how actually we deliver those therapeutics into the clinics and how actually these are formulated then into the clinics. And that's where it now is becoming extremely interesting and challenging from the physical scientist's point of view, using the same expertise that has been used in the past for developing new nanoscopic objects, they can be adapted into actually tackle some of these pharmaceutical challenges. It also gave me the opportunity to have a 360 degree view of a problem and therefore using chemistry expertise, physics expertise, as well as the medics and the biologists together to tackle that challenges. And that is not just allows us to have uh, four times more resources, actually 40 times more resources, because the combined effect is actually 10 times better than a single one. The university is a very good environment in which to do that because it has invested in, for example, this building, the suite of clean rooms, which is three quarters of a million. Without those, you can't go all the way from identifying the clinical problem doing the research and getting right back to the patient. So for me, completing the loop and going back to the patient is really where it's at.